This is ABC7 Extra. Good evening and welcome to ABC7 Extra Sunday edition. Tonight, a special edition, the opening of William Beaumont Army Medical Center, 10 years in the making. If you've driven down Spur 601, you've noticed a large behemoth of a new William Beaumont Hospital. Construction began 10 years ago, and now it is finally ready to open. William Beaumont, the first William Beaumont, first opened its doors July 1st, 1921. The new William Beaumont is expected to be the most technologically advanced hospital in the military. Kate Berry reports from ABC7 Extra, Sunday edition. Ten years after design started, the William Beaumont Army Medical Center is finally set to open up to the public next month, and some of the technology is the most advanced in the entire Army. Apply some positive pressure therapy on this patient. This is the most advanced medical simulator in the Department of Defense. And you're able to practice in a non-life-threatening scenario. I mean, what is the value of that? A priceless. This is a $300,000 mannequin that breathes and blinks. It's Little just one example of the innovative Similar technology inside the new William um, Beaumont Army Medical Center. 135 inpatient beds, 269 exam rooms. This cath lab is also among the most advanced in the Army. It rotates in space, allowing doctors to view the heart from different perspectives. In these emergency rooms, doctors and nurses will not only treat patients who live on base, but members of the public who have emergencies in the area. Once the hospital earns a level two trauma certification, this civilian head nurse told me the hospital can treat general members of the public for longer periods of time. And every patient who comes into this hospital is a person, whether they fit in that warmer right there or they fit on that gurney. And so the capabilities we have here are really very, very special. So not only were there years of delays in this project, it's also over budget. I asked the engineer on ABC 7 at 5 who is leading the investigation into the unexpected costs. Reporting from Fort Bliss, Kate Beery, ABC 7. I want to first introduce to you Colonel Michael Osheki. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. We're now going to start talking about the hospital itself. It is beautiful. I've walked around. It is something uh, for El Pasoans to be proud of. Absolutely so. I couldn't say it better myself. Now, I want to start with the first question. Were you, uh, when, why did it take so long to open this hospital? It took 10 years. So, uh, yeah, so uh, as you know, we've, uh, you know, we've talked about this you know, a lot over time. There are a number of factors that, uh, that contributed to that, you know, from uh, the uh, challenges in the design bid build process to changing technology to evolving regulatory standards, uh, and then most recently, the global COVID-19 pandemic. And then, as you're aware of, we had a, we had a contract protest on our point of use cabinet. So uh, these things all uh, were some of the, the elements that contributed to uh, a longer than expected process. Uh, the good news is that uh, I think all the stakeholders have learned quite a bit uh, as a result of that. How to wait. The, uh, <laughs> and, and hopefully how to do things better uh, in the future. Future. But uh, the most important thing is you know, you know, we've hit that key milestone now, opening the new hospital, and that's what I'm so excited about. Okay. Let's talk about the most exciting aspect of this hospital. We, you say it's the most technologically advanced hospital in the military right now. What makes it so technologically advanced? So the, you know, all of the integrated uh, uh, functions that we have here. So for example, you know, the hybrid OR, uh, which uh, you'll uh, be able to see later on uh, during the tour, the, you know, that allows for uh, robotic surgery, remote, the, uh, remote inputs. Uh, all, of our, uh, all of our ORs are set up. Uh, you know, they're, they're fully integrated with, uh, you know, with the latest ability for, uh, for residents to, you know, to be able to see what's going on uh, in the operating room. And it's it's linked into uh, automatic inputs into the uh, electronic uh, medical records. The patients have in their uh, in their rooms uh, an interactive TV system where they can get educational materials and everything right from the screen uh, in front of them uh, uh, in their rooms. It is just uh, uh, the integration of technology in every aspect uh, of care from the time a patient hits the emergency room until the time they're discharged is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so in essence, uh, this is what I'm interpreting from what you're saying right now is that technology had to catch up because in the private industry, this wouldn't it wouldn't pass butter. For it to open this long, uh, taking this long to open. 
so yeah, the, I mean the yeah, it's a little bit of apples and oranges when you compare yeah, yeah, the government systems to yeah, yeah, to civilian systems. But yeah, like I said, I think we've learned a lot yeah, yeah, from the yeah, from yeah, from our yeah, from our angle on how to how to do this better in the future. We talked about how this is something that El Pasoans are should be proud of. How will William Beaumont, the new version of William Beaumont, uh, benefit El Pasoans? Yeah, so the, uh, one of the really exciting things, uh, Saul, is uh, we have a requirement to become a level two trauma center when we open the doors uh, uh, to this new hospital. It's about a two-year process with the American College of Surgeons, but uh, when we achieve that level two trauma center certification for this hospital, then we can get what's called secretarial designee status, and that will allow us, uh, like many other military hospitals around the country in San Antonio, in uh, Tacoma, in Hawaii, uh, to take civilian emergency cases and and care for that patient from the time they hit the doors in the emergency room through surgery until discharge uh, the uh, and that is a that's a significant benefit uh, for uh, for our training programs here uh, uh, for our residents and for our medical staff that have to be ready to go uh, deploy around the world to take care of uh, uh, of patients yeah but it's a benefit to El Paso too because uh, that gives the Northeast uh, uh, another uh, another hospital a trauma center out here which uh, the uh, we don't have right now and that's a uh, uh, in our medically underserved community in the borderland yeah that's a huge addition uh, uh, to uh, to the community medical assets right now when a patient uh, uh, if there's an accident on Dyer Street yeah, a patient uh, is brought to William Beaumont the closest hospital if they're not a military beneficiary then yeah, we we treat them stabilize them uh, the emergently uh, but then we transfer them to an appropriate civilian hospital if they're not a military beneficiary so what you're saying is you don't turn anyone away we never turn anybody away we always take care of emergency patients regardless yeah but now we don't yeah, if they need to come into the hospital yeah then yeah, yeah then we transfer them uh, currently once we get secretarial designee status we can take care of those patients until they're ready to be discharged you mentioned that COVID-19 the pandemic obviously uh, had an impact on when you could open this hospital let's talk about what role Beaumont Hospital, this one specifically, the new one, the more technologically advanced hospital, what role it played during the pandemic, if any at all? So the the new facility, yeah, the, yeah, was not really because it wasn't open. It wasn't really a, a factor in the COVID response. But what was a factor in the COVID response was, yeah, our partnership uh, with the yeah, with our with the other hospitals in El Paso. So one of the things that we did during the pandemic, especially last fall when our uh, when all the hospitals were getting overwhelmed, but was uh, we reached out to all of uh, the partner hospitals in the community and any military or VA beneficiary you know we brought them in we transferred them to Beaumont to create space uh, in the civilian community so we did over 250 patients uh, uh, that we moved in uh, to help make some space in the community during the pandemic so you did treat COVID-19 patients here i.e. they had to be uh, military Oh yeah, no. We in in fact, uh, yeah, yeah, we had the largest uh, COVID nineteen bed expansion in the military health system in William Beaumont. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. We're going to take a really quick break. You're watching ABC Seven Extra. When we come back, we're going to take you to a simulation operating room right here at William Beaumont Hospital. I'm Saul Signs, and this is ABC Seven Extra, where news comes first. Unlock a summer of possibilities in a new Chevy. Expand your options and your perspective. Find your next adventure in a new Chevy. Enjoy the open road and make no monthly payments for the rest of the summer on select popular Chevy SUVs. Plus, get interest-free financing for 72 months when you finance with GM Financial. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. You have cancer. Sure wasn't expecting that. Not with these two. But my team at Texas Oncology has been right there for me. They said my family is a huge part of my treatment plan. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Right here is where I want to be. I'll see you in the morning.
For those who see everyone's safety as equally important, experience our advanced standard safety technology on a full line of vehicles. At the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Get special offers on the 2021 NX300. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. This can't be good. You've got enough to think about maintaining. Luckily, your Volkswagen is easy. The all-new 2022 Taos has a lower cost of maintenance than its Toyota, Honda, and Subaru competitors. Life's easier in a Volkswagen. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the all-new 2022 Taos S for just $229 a month. Welcome back to ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. We are inside an operation simulation room. It is one of the most technologically advanced simulation rooms in the military. And joining us now to give us an insight and talk about this simulation room is Dr. Daniel Kamersi. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. You're also an anesthesiologist? Correct. Tell us what we're seeing. Um, so like you mentioned, this is the uh, human patient simulator, the HPS. This is one of the most, this is the most advanced uh, simulator, medical simulator within the Department of Defense. What makes it so advanced? So as you'll see, everything in this room is interconnected. Um, this is our simulator here. Um, this is directly connected to our anesthesia machine. This is a real machine that uh, we would use in the operating room normally. And then it's connected to our vital signs uh, monitor here and that actual, uh, the software back there. So everything's interconnected. Um, so when the trainee or student um, does an intervention, makes an intervention on the patient, um, the mannequin will respond, our vitals respond uh, per the software. So it's very, very advanced. It creates a very high fidelity environment for the student. So is this a constant training or is this where you bring the students to train them initially? Um, both. Um, so this, this um, simulation center will help us to address our mission. So to promote readiness among our uh, medical professionals, uh, to promote re readiness among our warfighters, and also to, for help, to help us to provide excellent care to our military beneficiaries in the greater El Paso area. Right now our viewers are asking themselves as they're watching, what can it do? So what can it do? Well, the real question is, what can it uh, do? It does, does a lot of amazing things. Um, so as you'll see, the um, eyes open um, uh, per the programming. Uh, the pupils respond to light. Um, you can see that the chest is moving up and down um, as you would normally expect with a real patient. If I were to place a stethoscope and listen to the lung sounds, I'd hear lung sounds, heart sounds. You can actually feel the pulse. Um, um, on all the extremities, and it does move in certain clinical situations. Um, now, like I said, it's interconnected with our ventilator, so, you, so uh, Mr. Valle can see that the patient's breathing um, through end tidal CO2. That's an indication that the patient's breathing, um, and like I said, it's all interconnected to our monitors. Um, so, for example, if he was going to do a procedure like intubation, um, the technician can make it more difficult or less difficult for Mr. Valle to, to place the breathing tube, so it creates a very high fidelity situation similar to what you would experience with a real patient. So, tell me what sort of scenarios this simulation room is set up to uh, obviously uh, teach or to simulate see a car crash heli a helicopter crash a drowning uh, what sort of sim uh, scenarios can it set up so the possibilities are, are truly infinite we can create our own sim own simulation based on what we what we decide or we can choose from different uh, different set programs right, in that case let me give you one COVID-19 the pandemic it's got it's got COVID-19 what do you do Absolutely. Um, it would basically we would set our computer, uh, set the programming to um, make ventilation oxygenation more difficult, make it make it uh, more difficult for the for Mr. Valle to to intubate, and then we would have a different uh, we would have different PPE or personal protective equipment. So we'd be in full masks, um, and it would allow us to really simulate that high fidelity environment. Okay. So let's go ahead and do one if you can. Okay, so here we have a 17-year-old male just had a tonsillectomy, for, so remove the tonsils. The patient is emerging or waking up from anesthesia right now. Um, Mr. Valle is going to experience a uh, clinical situation called a laryngospasm. Um, this can happen um, often. Um, usually we can treat it very quickly. However, if it's not recognized and treated appropriately, the situation can become life-threatening. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Valle. Okay, uh, the uh, simulator here has told me that uh, the patient is deeply anesthetized. The patient is strong enough for us to remove Remove this breathing tube. So we're going to go ahead and proceed just with that. Breathing tubes come out. Now at this point, the breathing tube is out. The patient should be breathing safely on their own. However, the patient has become in depressed, uh, in distress. You can see the patient shaking. The eyes are shut. Um, by listening to the breath sounds, I can actually hear wheezing on both sides. 
So I need to resolve this situation, otherwise this patient will in fact die. First thing we do is the Larson's maneuver. Okay, there's been no resolution of that maneuver. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is apply some positive pressure off the machine, like so. Okay, that is ineffective as well. And lastly, we have definitive treatment here, which is a medicine, succinylcholine, very quick acting muscle relaxant. I can actually give this patient the medication in line. Okay, the medicine is now in. And I can now assist ventilate this patient. So I have resolved the crisis situation through uh, my set of interventions. Okay, we just saw that simulation going on right now. How helpful is this for people to just come on board and learning and training? Because obviously, this is simulation. How close is it to what a doctor or uh, anyone who's in here, uh, how close is it to what they'll see? Uh, very, very, very close. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but our monitors were responding to what was going on in our cl clinical situation. So this is about as close as we can get to real life. Um, so this really allows um, students and trainees to get a feel for these clinical situations before they start caring for real patients. So it's a very effective learning tool. Quite logically, this is not the only Army hospital in the United States. However, do you envision the day when more students will come here or more military personnel will come here to train? And what sort of training will they undergo? Um, absolutely. The, the possibilities are really endless in terms of training. Um, currently, we, we can have uh, nursing students, uh, nurses, medical students, interns, residents, um, visiting medical students from across the country come here and to experience this, uh, this simulator. Okay. Well, Dr. Kamersi, thank you so much for taking time to us, and thank you for all for the simulation that you all provided for us. When we come back, you're watching NBC7 Extra, but when we come back, we're actually going to go into a high-tech cath room. We'll be right back. Don't miss Black Friday and July deals this weekend only at Ashley Home Store. Find huge savings on doorbusters starting as low as $2.99. Like this queen panel bed or this four-piece dining set. Friday through Monday only at Ashley Home Store. Jess, they wanted to say good luck on the interview. Confidence looks great on you. Right now, get $1,000 customer cash, or qualified lessees can lease a new 2021 Corolla LE for only $1.99 a month. Toyota, let's go places. It's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a success. And a head of display. They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yep. So you. It is. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Get 4500 purchase cash on this 2021 Enclave Avenue. Plus, current eligible Buick owners get an additional allowance when you finance through GM Financial. Black Friday is happening in July at Ashley Home Store. Friday through Monday only, save up to 40% off store-wide. Or get 0% interest for five years with no minimum purchase and no money down. This weekend only at Ashley Home Store. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition for this, our third and final segment. We are inside the hybrid cath lab inside William Beaumont Medical Center, one of the most technologically advanced cath labs in the military. And here to tell us about it is Dr. Charles Lin. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Tell us exactly what this cath lab is. Well, thank you for the time. So the cath lab is an area in the hospital where we're able to offer our patients uh, minimally invasive cardiovascular procedures things like uh, balloon angioplasty, stent procedures, and valve replacements for the management of uh, cardiovascular disease. Okay, and what is this that we see behind us? So here we have the standard setup for one of our three cath labs. Here we see the x-ray machine, the monitor, the patient table. Around we have some ancillary equipment required for taking care of these patients. 
The systems I usually hear is, as you said, one of the most state-of-the-art advanced systems available within the Department of Defense to our knowledge. Let me, say, let me stop you right there. What separates this one from the ones that you already have? What we have now compared to the one we use at the Legacy Hospital, these systems, uh, because of the technological advancements, we're able to offer these invasive cardiovascular procedures with things like less radiation, less contrast, and shorter procedural times, all of which contribute to better patient outcomes um, and better patient satisfaction. Got it. Okay, so this is where you uh, place the patient right here? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. And what are all these gadgets right, right here? So, you guys want. so these gadgets, uh, as Mr. Miller is gonna demonstrate for us, these control the x-ray machines, which we can see, um, one of which here in this lab, there are two. The x-ray machines rotate in space to give us real-time imaging of the heart for our diagnostic and our therapeutic procedures. So you can control when it spins, goes around, That's everything? Correct. Yes, sir. All the patient information from their vital signs to their EKG to their, the images that the x-rays generate, all those are displayed in real time on the screen here. So if a patient were there, what would we see on the screen? So if a patient were on the table, uh, we, we can basically customize our layout any way the physician needs to, to take the patient. But standard would be the x-ray machines will create x-ray images, moving images of what the heart and blood flow are doing on these screens. Patient's EKG and vital signs for the nurses to monitor during the procedure. And the system, here is different than what we have at the Legacy Hospital because all of our systems are now integrated into one system. So things like intravascular ultrasound, putting an ultrasound probe within the heart vessel itself, which is basically as low as two millimeters in diameter, we can have that image displayed on the screen in an integrated fashion instead of having a standalone device. So all that information is basically at the provider's fingertips so we can make medical decisions and take care of the patient in a very streamlined and efficient manner. Let's talk about, about a scenario, because obviously you're talking to me about everything it can do, but let's talk about a specific scenario. Say, for instance, we have a really bad crash over on I-10 or Spur 601. Mm -hmm. The patient is brought here either unconscious or conscious. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the minute that he's, that he's brought into the hospital and he needs this? Correct. So if a patient needs an emergent cardiac procedure for if it's traumatic injuries, if it's a heart attack, the patient is brought immediately from the emergency room, which is located just one floor below us. Our nurses and technicians are trained to do so in a very efficient and time expedited manner. We bring them to the table and we can utilize all the equipment that we need to take care of that cardiac emergency, whatever the case may be. Okay, so the, the patient is suffering from cardiac arrest mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out what's causing it? Correct. If, if the patient comes in from cardiac arrest or heart attack, if there's a blocked blood vessel, we have the capability to bring that patient very quickly in an emergent manner from the emergency room and put them on the table, get everything set up, and go in with our equipment to open that blood vessel if that's the uh, cause of his uh, arrest. One of the things that we noticed over at the simulation operation room is that it also, um, it's also used to train uh, the people who are obviously coming in here, anyone in the military. Is this the same thing where you can train some folks out here to use this as well? This can be converted into a training device um, with the machine. Uh, if uh, technicians, as they come in, if they need assist, uh, education in terms of how to move the equipment, learn how to use the equipment, this can be adapted to serve those purposes. Do you envision it as being used that way in, in the future? If, yes, absolutely. Um, if it's training and education are very important parts of our mission, not only for our medical trainees in terms of residents, but technicians, um, nurses, um, if this is part of their skill set, we can utilize them to become more familiar with our cath lab operations. Tell me what the most exciting part about all this is, this cath room, this cath lab. What is the most exciting part about it that really that, that just knocks people's socks off or yours in case, and you say, this is why you have to come here? The, excited, the most exciting thing to me as a cardiologist is the benefits that our patients will receive from devices such as these. Even though we pride ourselves at the legacy we in Beaumont to having a lot of this modern equipment to do a lot of the things that I've said in terms of taking care of critical heart conditions. More modern technology can do this with less radiation, less contrast, better outcomes for our patients. So we continuously to find ways to say, how can we do better for our patients? How do we meet our mission of providing safe, compassionate, and quality healthcare? And this system, and systems like these, I think allow us to do that. 
For those of us who are neither a neophyte or don't even want to get into medicine, why is it important not to have or to have less radiation and less invasive uh, operation or therapy? Right. So with the more radiation one gets, the more risk of complications, either skin burns, radiation-induced injuries of any organ within the chest. Um, with contrast-based procedures, contrast dye, the more contrast dye we use for a procedure, the higher the chance of developing things like kidney failure. And all those things uh, correlate with bad, poor patient outcomes down the line. Our goal is to make sure we do everything with a minimal risk to the patient so that we can take care of them and they can have better patient outcomes. Afterwards. What is contrast therapy? What is that? Uh, contrast therapy is basically a liquid that we inject into the body. It shows up as uh, dark on the x-ray machine, and that's how we determine how the blood flow is, what the blood flow is. So it gives you a better body. look inside the body. That's correct, okay. exactly. It allows us to look for blockages. It allows us to position devices where they need to be. So it's a critical part of our procedures, and for us to reduce the amount of contrast that the patient needs, that just correlates to better patient outcomes down the line. All right. Dr. Charles Lim, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And I want to thank you as well as William Bo Beaumont Medical Center for allowing us into this large, large building, 10 years in the making. And, of course, we'll be reporting more as this opens up. For now, I'm Saul Signs, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night. Be with us, not just.